Hello everyone. Uh, myself, Amulya Hachuji, Assistant Professor from Triple E Department from Sai Vidya Institute of Technology. Today we are giving a demonstration on a control system laboratory. The subject code is 15WEL67. Today we are demonstrating the first experiment that is the lead compensating network. So the aim of the experiment is to design a passive RC lead compensating network for a given specification and also to determine experimentally the transfer function of a lead compensating network. So now we'll see what is the meaning of a compensator. Compensator is a device inserted into the system for meeting the certain specification. So we have a two type of compensator. One is the lead comp one is the active compensator, other one is the passive type of compensator. Active compensator means the device which uses the active devices like op amps and a transistor. And the passive compensator means the device which uses the resistor, inductor and a capacitor. The lead compensator is basically a passive type of compensator. It is. So now we will see what is this lead compensator is. Lead compensator is basically it is an electrical network which produces a sinusoidal output which is having a phase lead when the sinusoidal input is applied. So this is the graph of a lead compensating network. This is the sinusoidal graph for output voltage V0 of T and this is the sinusoidal graph for input voltage VA of T. Always in a lead compensating network, the phase, uh, the output voltage will be leads the input voltage so that we can call it as a lead compensating network and it will be having a phase difference as a 5M. So this is the circuit for a lead compensating network. In this circuit, the resistance is connected in parallel with the capacitor across the input side and one more resistance R2 which is connected across the output side that is V0. So this is the expected graph for a typical lead compensating network. So this is the plot for a voltage gain and this will be the plot for a phase gain. So now we'll see the derivation of a comp lead compensating network. So uh, how we define a uh, transfer function means it is defined as the ratio of output Laplace transform to the input Laplace transform by keeping the initial condition as zero. So the same lead compensating network we can rewrite it in terms of Laplace. So the, the resistance connected in, in a series so in parallel with the capacitor that can be written as Z1 will be equal to R1 in parallel with in terms of Laplace we can write the capacitor as 1 by C into S and the current flowing in this network is I of S it is. So the input voltage can be written as V I of S and the output voltage can be written as V naught of S. So now we have to obtain the expression for V naught of S as well as V A of S. So here we are written. Uh, the expression for V naught of S is R2 that is the resistance and the current flowing through this resistance is I of S. Consider this as equation 1. Similarly, we will write the expression for the input voltage V I of S that is the impedance Z1 along with the one more resistance R2. So Z1 plus R2 and the current flowing in both the circuit is it is I of S. So in this voltage input voltage expression, we are rewriting the same with respect to I of S. So we are writing it as V I of S divided by R2 plus Z1. So now further we will simplify this expression by considering the value of Z1. Z1 is nothing but R1 in parallel with the capacitor. So same thing I have written here by simplifying the expression. So uh, simplify the denominator. After uh, simplifying all this, we are going to obtain the final expression for the current I of S. So this is the final expression for current that is I of S. Consider this whole equation as equation 2. Now substitute equation 2 in our equation 1. So the equation 1 is V0 of S will be equal to R2 into I of S. So here substitute the value of I of S in equation 2. So after substituting uh, the equation uh, of I of S in this, so we are going to obtain here. So here in the numerator we have a V I of S is there. So that we are going to shift it to the left hand side. So we can write our uh, transfer function as v naught of s divided by va of s will be equal to r2 into r1 into cs plus 1 whole divided by r1 plus r2 plus r1 into cs so further simplify the whole expression so in the numerator we can take r2 r1 c as a common similarly in the denominator we can take r2 r1 c as a common so after taking all the common terms so we can re uh, rewrite the equation as s plus 1 divided by r1 into c similarly the denominator as s plus r1 plus r2 whole divided by r1 into r2 into c now let us consider r1 into c as t1 
alpha it is nothing but ratio of uh, uh, the zeros by poles that can be written as r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so substituting this t1 value and alpha value in the above equation we can write our final uh, expression of, of a transfer function for a lead compensating network as s plus 1 divided by t1 whole divided by s plus 1 divided by alpha into t1 so this is the standard expression for a lead compensating network so as i already told you this is a lead compensating network in a lead compensating network the poles is always greater when compared to zeros remember this the poles is always greater than zeros so then only we are going to get the phase as positive so for proving this statement so we'll assign some um, we'll uh, assign some values for t as well as alpha so now consider the value of t it should be greater than 0 and the value of alpha it should lies between 0 and 1 that means the alpha should be less than 0 and it should be greater than 1 so based on this assumption we'll give some values for t as well as for the alpha so now consider the value of t it will be equal to so we'll assign some value for t as well as alpha so as i told you t should be greater than 0 and alpha value should lies between 0 and 1 so now let us consider the value of t will be equal to 1 and the alpha value will be equal to it is it lies between 0 to 1 so we'll consider as 0.5 now so now consider this whole denom so numerator this will be our zeros and the whole denominator this will be poles so we can write the expression for a zeros as s will be equal to it is minus 1 by t it is so now substitute the value of t that is 1 so we can write 1 divided by 1 is the answer for a zero is minus 1 similarly we can write uh, the value of a poles as poles will be equal to it is s will be equal to minus 1 divided by alpha into t1 so that will be equal to so we we assign the value of alpha as 0.5 so substitute here anyhow the t value will be equal to 1 it is 1 divided by 0.5 means it is minus 2 so we got the values for uh, zeros as well as uh, poles so zero is minus 1 and the pole is minus 2 so the same values we are going to plot it in a pole zero plot for a lead compensating network so the value of zero is minus 1 so here our uh, the zero value will lies and the value of poles is minus 2 so that will be lies here so what did i told you so always the pole should be greater when compared to the zero so, so even in the poles and zero plot we obtain the same the poles is always greater when compared to the zeros now we'll see the design specification for a lead compensating network so here we are consider the phase value will be 45 degree and the frequency value maximum frequency will be 1 kilohertz so the same value we can design it for 45 degree and also we can design it by taking the phase value as a 60 degree now we are designing for a phase of 45 degree now let us consider these are the design specification equations the first design specification equation is sin phi m will be equal to 1 minus alpha divided by 1 plus alpha so already this uh, maximum phase has been given as a 45 degree substitute that in the above equation and equate the value of alpha so here we are, i have done the simplification and i obtained the value of alpha as 0.17 one so next is omega m so this is the maximum angular frequency the equation for omega m as 2 pi into fm so the maximum frequency is 1 kilohertz that is also given in the design specification substitute that fm value so we'll be getting the uh, omega m value as 6.2 in 6.28 kilo radians per second similarly Uh, one more maximum frequency i'm um, a maximum angular frequency is there that is 1 divided by t into square root of alpha so this equation will be using for substituting the value of the time t so after simplify the see already we know the expression value of uh, omega m is known and also the value of alpha is known the only unknown is t so substitute these two values in the above equation so we got the expression for t as 0.384 milliseconds similarly substitute the value of a time t so the t we already uh, assign it assume it in the previous uh, uh, derivation of the transfer function of a lead network so the t can be written as r1 into c so here 
t is already known and the capacitor value we have to assume it as 0.1 microfarad so t is known and capacitor value is also known only unknown is r1 value substitute the value of r1 so we'll be getting 3.8 kilo ohm similarly substitute the value of alpha alpha is nothing but it is r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so simplify this whole equation and find the unknown value that is r2 so r2 is 820 ohm so in your lab you won't be having the 3.8 kilo ohm of a resistor so near to that we'll be having a standard resistor that is a 3.9 kilo ohm is there so this is the value of r1 similarly 820 ohm also it is not uh, 820 ohm is there so this is our standard resistor so the now the value of resistance r1 is 3.9k and similarly r2 is it is 820 ohm so after calculation of this r1 and r2 so next we have to calculate what will be the angular cutoff uh, uh, frequency of a higher as well as the lower angular cutoff frequency so this is our expected graph so 1 by t this is nothing but omega c1 and 1 by square root of alpha into 2 this is nothing but omega cm value and 1 by alpha into 2 alpha into t this is nothing but the value of omega c2 so that is the higher cutoff angular frequency so we have to substitute all these values of omega c omega c, omega uh, we have to calculate the value of omega c1 omega c1 is 1 divided by t so already in the previous design specification we calculated the value of uh, uh, t it is uh, 0 0.384 millisecond substitute that in this omega c equation so we'll be getting the omega c1 value as a 2.63 radians per second so as we know the omega angular frequency with this we can calculate the frequency f1 will be equal to it is uh, since omega c1 is nothing but 2 pi into f1 so the same equation we can rewrite it as omega c1 divided by 2 pi so substitute the value of omega c1 and divide that by 2 pi so we'll be getting the value of f1 as 418 hertz this is our frequency value of f1 similarly calculate what will be the omega cm value that is maximum angular frequency omega m will be equal to 1 divided by square root of alpha into t so also the already we calculated the alpha value as well as the t value from the previous steps so directly i'll substitute the value of these two in this omega equation so we'll be getting the omega m value as 6.36 kilo radians per second so now you know the maximum frequency equation from the maximum angular frequency so that we can write it as omega m divided by 2 pi so this will be equal to 1 kilo hertz so this is the value of the maximum frequency that is fm now similarly calculate the last angular uh, higher cutoff frequency that is omega c2 that will be equal to 1 divided by alpha into t so alpha and t it's already known so directly i'll substitute the value of omega c2 that is uh, 15.38 kilo radians per second so with this you calculate what will be the f2 value f2 will be equal to omega c2 divided by 2 pi that will be equal to 2.4 kilohertz so now we got the value of f1 fm and f2 so these three values will write it in the tabular column so this is our tabular column so here the v input voltage peak to peak that we have set is 2 volt and uh, the rms voltage is v in peak to peak divided by 2 into square root of 2 so after substituting we'll be getting a v in rms value as 0 0.707 and with this we'll be calculating the voltage gain by using this formula so we'll uh, plot the tabular column so omega c1 from the previous calculation we got uh, 2.63 kilo radians per second so with this we'll be getting the frequency as a 418 hertz and omega cm is 6.36 kilo and fm value will be 1 kilohertz and f2 value will be 2.4 kilohertz so we have to set these three frequencies in the signal generator so so we obtain the value of uh, all the three frequencies as uh, 418 hertz and one more frequency as uh, 1 kilohertz maximum frequency f2 is a uh, 2.4 kilohertz so after that the same values we have to set in the signal generator so this is our circuit of a lead compensating network so here on the input side we have to connect the signal generator in the signal generator we have to set a uh, two voltage peak to peak this this we can see it in the 
CRO on the input side and uh, we have to give already from the design specification we calculated the R1 value the value of R1 will be equal to 3.9 kilo ohms and the value of R2 will be equal to it is 820 ohm and the capacitor value will be 0 0.1 microfarad so this will be the R2 value it should be connected across uh, the output side on the CRO so now we will go with the conduction part now we will see the conduction part so we are con I made the connection according to the circuit R1 this is the R1 value 3.9 kilo it is connected in parallel with the capacitor that is 0 0.1 microfarad and these two are connected with the one more resistance that is R2 the value of R2 is 820 ohm so uh, on the input side we have to take a connection from the signal generator we have to set a voltage of a 2 voltage peak to peak and also that with 2 voltage peak to peak we can check it on the CR ohm so now uh, I'll make the connection I have taken the connection from uh, the signal generator and also I have taken the connection from the CR ohm so those two inputs I'm connecting on the input side and this will be the common ground point so I'll be connecting uh, the black and uh, the ground of uh, the CRO as well as the signal generator on the common ground point so now observe here so here we have set the input voltage 2 voltage peak to peak so now we will connect the output so now I have given the output connection across the output side so here I have connected uh, the output from the CRO and this is the common ground point same way I have connected here so now observing the CRO so we are getting both the input as well as the output so set both the input as well as the output on the reference after setting both the input as well as output on the reference now press XY mode so that we are going to get a Lissages pattern so even in the Lissages pattern also we have to get the reference so set this dot so press the xy mode so we'll be getting the lissages pattern set this lissages pattern origin at the origin point so release the ground of both so now measure the minimum value and the maximum value so observe here so for calculation of a phase phi will be equal to sine inverse of it is minimum by maximum in a Lissages pattern this is a Lissages pattern means since it is a lead compensating network we have to take above reference value because always the lead should be positive it is so this will be the minimum value that we can consider as a B and this will be the maximum value that is A so now observe the same thing even in the graph also so but we have not set the frequency so what will be our first frequency value f1 should be equal to it is the 418 hertz so now we'll keep the uh, frequency mode set the frequency to 400 hertz So now we have set for the first frequency that is uh, 413 so near to 418 we can set the frequency so for that we obtained this Lissages pattern so observe here uh, so this will be the minimum value of the Lissages pattern and this will be the maximum value so the minimum value is uh, uh, 1 division so 1 that is the value of uh, B will be equal to 1 and the value of uh, A will be equal to it is a uh, 2 division 2 so we are going to obtain the phase value sine inverse of 1 by 2 so we will be obtaining it as 35.8 degree so this will be the phase value for the phase as for the frequency as 418 so 35.8 so now we set it for frequency of 1 kilohertz so we are getting this Lissages pattern so calculate what will be the phase value by taking minimum and maximum so approximately we have to get it near 45 degree only uh, calculate that so uh, according to our design specification the phase value is a 45 degree for a frequency of a 1 kilohertz so now in the theoretical uh, practical also for a phase uh, for a frequency of a 1 kilohertz we are getting a frequency as a 45 degree so what we can observe from these two means our theoretical calculations are matched with the practicals so now similarly you can take it for uh, the frequency 2.4 kilohertz set it in the signal generator and check the value of a phase in the CRO by using that Lissages pattern 
so note down what will be the face value and in the meantime note down what will be the v0 rms value from the multimeter because from the uh, CRO we are getting a peak well, peak voltages but we want a RMS voltage so for that we will be taking a multimeter that multimeter will be connected across on the output side where we are connected the CRO output and measure what will be the V0 for the frequency 418 1 kilohertz and similarly 2.4 kilohertz so this we can conclude the experiment uh, by plotting this graph, we can conclude this experiment. These values should be plotted on a semilog sheet.